Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen, or as we say in Krakoan, Ande Ahinshe. Today, let's we're gonna look at the very uh, last of this uh, Dawn of X arc, if you could call it that, right? Uh, was it a story arc? Uh, was it a uh, a crossover? We'll talk about the mechanics of this thing a bit, and in specific, we'll talk about New Mutants number two, X Force number two. And Fallen Angels number two, today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to the show. Today on Comic Book News, we're going to talk about uh, the last three in the Dawn of X. So we'll start with, uh, in the preferred reading order as described in the back pieces of the book, uh, New Mutants number two. Uh, by John Hickman with art by Rod Rice. Uh, X-Force number two, written by Ben Percy, art by ben, uh, uh, Joshua Cassera with colors by Dean White. Uh, and finally, Fallen Angels number two by Brian Hill, Simon Kadransky art, uh, and Frank Dermata colors. So, you know, uh, there's been a lot of books man a lot of books to read in this whole dawn of x thing it started off we're canceling all the x-men books fresh start right so now we've got already got a plethora uh of books to read uh and there's more coming down the pike but do you have to read them all i mean frankly this wasn't a numbered thing or a numbered crossover and i've read them all and i can tell you definitively you didn't have to read them all uh, to understand what's going on at all. You can pick the ones that you like the best, whether it's because of the creative team, the characters, the story arc, or may, maybe it's the uh, your favorite covers. I don't know. There's a million reasons. In fact, if I had a nickel for every reason there was to buy this series, I'd have enough for a million-dollar comic scam. And luckily, we do have a million-dollar comic scam. So today... Uh, we're going to talk about all three books. Let's talk about them um, uh, in the uh, preferred reading order. We'll start with New Mutants number two. I am definitely not doing a full recap of these things. Uh, most of all because I already did a complete video recapping most of this stuff. And I looked and I had something hanging out of my nose the whole time. And so now I'm reshooting the entire video. That's the kind of dedication I have for you, comic book news fans. Uh, anyway... Uh, New Mutants. Uh, this is the book written by Hickman, right? He's the architect. He's the guy writing X-Men. So if you're reading any of the books, you're probably reading X-Men and New Mutants. Um, frankly, this harkens back to the day of Chris Claremont when he was writing There Was Only Uncanny X-Men and there was his New Mutants book. And uh, I want to take a second and highly recommend the Amazon documentary uh, Chris, Chris Claremont's X-Men that goes deep into the past of Chris Claremont. I've talked a lot of smack about Chris Claremont. I, I, I do love, I've always said I liked and respect the characters and stuff that he's created, but um, he's got a rich legacy. The X-Men are nothing without Claremont. So whatever I've said about him being the art Garfunkel of comics, while that may be semi-true, somewhat true, uh, he deserves a lot more respect than that. He's a, he's a great writer, brought great things to the X-Men. Speaking of great things, I really like Rod Rice. This art is reminiscent of uh, Bill Sienkiewicz without being slavish or, or an imitation in any way. There's influences that you can see in some of the abstract stuff. But man, he's pulling inspiration from a lot of different places. This is almost looking like mixed media. Some of it's coming like looking from old comics. Some of it's almost newspaper strippish. Some of it is... Uh, 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 you know, more abstract from the art world. That experimental mixture of, of, of art forms is what Sienkiewicz was all about. So in spirit, man, he's alive. And between you and me, I like this a lot better than some of the recent Sienkiewicz artwork, which I did enjoy a lot. Uh, but I think Rod Rice is an up-and-comer, man. I think this is great stuff, and, and we expect to see great things out of him. Anyway, New Mutants. They're in space jail. Ha ha. They got space lawyers. Ha ha. They're convicted for life, haha. -ha. Anyway, they've got pulled because I guess from previous X-Men adventures, Cannonball has been here in the Shire Empire and is working with the 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 the, 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 Galact the Guardians, the Shire sort of super crew. Um, 
This is Smasher. And I talked before about Gladiator, who I think I called Guardian. And I think I also mistakenly said that they were sort of... The, the, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard was sort of like a stand-in for the Justice League with, with Gladiator being Superman. And I, what, what, I was wrong. And, of course, what I meant to say was they're standing for the Legion of Superheroes. And we'll see even more how I why I realized it when I was reading this book that I was wrong. Um, anyway, I love Rod Rice's work. The, these faces are great. The body language is, is, is killer. I mean, this is a lot of talking. There's not a ton of action in this stuff. Here's a little bit of action for you. Uh, but, but, man, it was fun and enjoyable to read. Beautiful to look at. Uh, this is solid comics artwork, guys. I like it. Anyway, the Imperial Guard. So I guess uh, Gladiator now is the Magister, like the sort of leader in the pecking order here of this these uh, Imperial Guard uh, um, uh, uh, mentors to the to the Crown, and uh, not mentors, but uh, advisors to the Crown, because the the two others are Mentor and Oracle, and. Who, as we'll see, are are, are are just sort of stand-ins for other Legion of Superhero characters. I think uh, Brainiac and maybe Dream Girl or Saturn Girl. You let me know in the comments. Who's Oracle supposed to be? Um, anyway, more Sienkiewicz-influenced, but very competent comics art. I'm really impressed with this. This is by far the best artwork. And I think it's even better than the number one. I thought both of the number twos on this one and X-Force looked better than the number ones, which might have been rushed coming out of the whole bi-weekly House of X, Powers of X thing. Anyway, here we go. Here's a, 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 a mentor and Oracle, right? And if that's not Brainiac, right, who is it? And, and uh, Oracle, I think Dream Girl is the character who can kind of like see the future in the Legion. Let me know in the comments. Um, anyway, we get more stuff and we get the return of another old favorite, right? If you got the Shi'ar and leadership is in question, who might be brought back? But Deathbird, uh, cool stuff, cool character, fun callbacks. This is a fun book. I'm enjoying it. I'm on board. I'm going to keep reading New Mutants. Uh, oh, and next, have you heard the good news? What's that a reference to? That's sort of a, like a religious reference, uh, or could it be... Maybe in reference to, um, will we find out what's happened to Professor X? Will he be uh, resurrected? We don't know. In fact, we're going to find out more about that right now as we go right into X-Force number two. And we find, we pick up right where we left off. When we did X-Force number two, uh, assassins came in. They had these weird white strips, uh, like white strips of tape or something, on their bodies. And uh, we're able to get into Krakoan, uh, Krakoan defenses and getting close enough to be able to shoot Professor X in the head. And that they did. Did they kill him? Well, looks like they did because all this build up and showing Professor X with the helmet and never seen without his face, without the helmet on. Here he is from way far back, granted, so we can't really see what's going on, but sure doesn't look like there's anything unusual. Was that just a red herring? Was that just suspicion to throw us off? Is this meaningful? Anyway, and Magneto says, that was your plan, your island, your future, and so it will remain as long as you return to us. Long live the king, right? Mutants around the world flocking to Krakoa. Only Professor X has just been assassinated by a strike team that somehow infiltrated Krakoa's defense sensors. Right? And we're going to find out how and why. There was speculation, and I had seen some stuff online and in the comments here about what it was. It turned out that it was correct, and we'll talk about how it's pretty gruesome, and but a pretty cool idea. And you'll see that. Spoiler alert. Uh, Professor X and Jean Grey uh, sort of talk it over, talk over the situation. Can Jean Grey bring back Professor X? I don't know. We're going to try. It's in question. It's unsure. Is this drama I'm feeling, folks? Sort of. Has Professor X, how many times has he died and been brought back anyway in the X-Men so is this really this all new, all different thing? This is what we're going to do? Okay, Hickman, I trust you enough to stay on board. Uh, and I like this art and I like this story um, here in X-Force anyway. And I like these characters. I like these assassin characters, these new Reavers. They look like Reaver-ish technology. Like every part of their body has weapons built into them. They've got extra bone in their forearm that's like a claw and... Uh, we can see they've got uh, 
we'll see they got all kinds of extra weapons built into their ears and stuff and teeth and uh anyway wolverine is going to go off in search of domino they're going to use a tracker i guess to try and track her down and long is going to come everyone's least favorite annoying mutant quentin choir otherwise known as i guess kid omega um uh, an annoying kind of character omega level mutant i guess psychokinetic i think has a psychic shotgun as we see on the cover kind of just like a punky snarky character with lots of mental powers i've not been a big fan of he was invented i think in the morrison run of x-men kind of liked him there and he's been used in a bu bunch of different weird ways since uh, anyway, when in need of an Omega level telepath, I guess seek out Kid Omega. Um, we get to see uh, them looking for Domino and stumbling across what Wolverine calls an assassin factory, right? Where they're growing these crazy guys. And we learn more about these Reavers and this technology that's built into them and how, like, oh, in their ear, instead of cartilage, it's got wire, coil up wires that they can use to strangle people. <laughs> I like that. They've got explosives packed into all of their molars that they can use to like get out of situations. So like all kinds of parts of their bodies can be used as weapons. Um, and the way that they were able to get through these uh, Krakoan sensors, they have some kind of graft, skin graft, that let them get through. Where did that come from, I wonder? Well, we're going to find out. Um, as they find these assassins, these guys being grown in the lab or whatever, and we get a nice battle. Cool art. I like the way this guy draws action. I like the way he draws Wolverine. This uh, Dean uh, Joshua Casera and Dean White on colors. I think the book looks good. And then we get final spoiler alert reveal. Those strips are strips of Domino's skin, right? In the first issue, we saw her get captured by the crazy board of directors or whatever, or this mutant hate and cult. And uh, they use that to penetrate the defenses to get a shot in at Xavier. And it worked, dadgummit. Um, so where are we at? Is Xavier going to die? We don't know. And, and what are we going to find out next? In Next time, lost and found. What does that mean? I don't know. Not sure. Could refer to almost anything. Finally, Fallen Angels number two. And I'm just going to flat out say it. This was my least favorite of these three books by far. Not really a fan of any of these characters in Fallen Angels. And uh, not too big a fan of the Seisman, Kadransky, and Frank Darmada color artwork. Uh, it's overly photo referenced in my opinion. It looks really weird and photoshoppy in a way that I'm not a big fan of. You might like it. And that's okay. These might be some of your favorite characters. I'm not making passing judgment on you. It's not my favorite book for sure. Um, not my favorite thing to look at. Not my favorite thing to read about. Um, but, you know, as I was going through it, I was like, all right. It's moody. It's angsty. If you like those kind of characters and bad girl artwork, this might be your thing. And, you know, I did like the whole cybernetic drug thing that they had. Um, and so I thought, all right, the storytelling, maybe I'll stay on board. I'll give him a chance, give him a chance to redeem themselves. These text pieces are pretty lame. The storytelling is decent. I will give it that. The artwork does look okay. I'm a little distracted by it. It's a little dark and gloomy, a little too bad, girly, cheesecakey, she, the assassin, whatever. Not my thing, but okay, you might enjoy it. And then we finally get to the final page where they're attacked by the giant robots, and we get this piece of junk page. Look at this robot design. Super lame. Lame legs. This whole page looks rushed like they crapped it out real fast to get this book in the can on time. Not a big fan. Next, Cocoon. Didn't even have to break out my Krakoan dictionary to read that one. I'm starting to get the hang of it. Um, so, hey, let's talk. Dawn of X or the Art of X, right? So, um, I didn't like the way they've dragged out this whole death of Professor X. I do like the way, the fact that I didn't have to read all these books, right? I could have skipped 
any one of these and I would miss a slice of what's going on. I'd miss the outer spacey adventures of the New Mutants. I'd miss the uh, underground angsty adventures of the Fallen Angels. And maybe I'd miss the action-packed X-Force, right? But I, but I could still get the overall thing of the X-Men. I could pick the ones that I like. That's great. I like a loosely coupled crossover, right? Where if I'm a hardcore guy, I can get into it and read it all. But I'm not going to feel like I'm missing anything if I don't read every single bit. Um, so, Dawn of X. I'm going to continue reading these. I'm going to probably group more of these reviews. I'm not going to do every single issue of every single one of these will i read the next fallen angel we'll see um one thing i want to talk about hey if you're hanging around here you you're, you're a hardcore and i appreciate it i wanted to say hey, rest in peace to tom spurgeon the comics reporter one of the greats uh in comics journalism there's really nobody else to compare to that guy from his days on the comics journal where he was the best of the best editors Loved every type of comics like I do, from comic books to comic strips to superhero stuff to art comics to undergrounds and everything in between. And uh, wrote about them in a way that was like passionate and uh, literate and affecting. And we'll miss the guy. So, anyway, uh, rest in peace, Tom Spurgeon. Guys, thanks for watching this channel. Thanks for supporting us. We are so close to that number 500 subscribers and when we get there all we need is what 500 more to get to a thousand and we can monetize this channel and, and start to make my dreams come true of building uh the comic book news empire so hey everybody who's been watching thank you for uh, watching thank you for subscribing if you haven't already take a moment hit that subscribe button uh click that bell for notifications and new videos but uh, most importantly, if you've got something to share and something to talk about and want to talk about the X-Men or comic book news or anything else, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section. Love the comments. I love the interaction between fans and uh, readers in the comment section. So keep that happening. Keep watching comic book news. I'm going to be on a bit of a business trip next week. So again, my reviews might be a little bit late or a little bit sporadic. But we'll get back on schedule and back on track. Uh, that's the beauty of this whole uh, internet YouTube age. You can watch these things when they come out. I can make them when I can, and you can watch them when you can. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for uh, everything you do to subscribe and support this channel, and we will see you next time.